Nope. Nope. Hmm. Maybe. Nope. Nope. Uh-uh. No way. Uh-uh. No. Ew. Oh, yeah. That'll do. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eatmo Pie, and this is episode 4 of the Pandaren Starting Zone Leveling Guide. So here we go. So we left off in episode 3 at about an hour and 7 minutes played after a long role-playing cutscene. And uh, we're off to turn in our new quest, well, the quest that tells our new master, Shao Pai exactly what's going on with the turtle island and the giant hole in his butt so we turn this in he's gonna give us a new quest to go through the gates into the area that our feet do not tread and meet the horde we're gonna meet the horde first so Asa G and Jojo Ironbro are down here waiting for us and we'll speak to them and start going through the gates okay as you go down these stairs on the right side at the bottom of the stairs is the profession master at the Temple of Five Dawns, the Pandaren Profession Master is here. He wasn't there before. I've never seen him up until a few days ago. But in case you're looking, you'll find him here at the Temple of Five Dawns. So this door is kind of stuck, but uh, Jojo Iron Bro bros it down. <laughs> G and Asa can't budge it. But uh, anyway, there is some quality role playing that takes place here, especially when you meet the Horde. But uh, I pretty much skipped that because I was trying to level quickly. And that's just how I do it. And that's pretty much what this guide is all about, is how to do this the most efficient way possible. I'm with you. Ugh, did they prop this door up against the boulder? Oh, I need it won't budge. Well done, Jojo. That Jojo is a beast! So we basically just play follow the leader to the horde encampment. Now, the way that this story goes is it was an Alliance airship that crashed into the giant Turtle Island's butt. And the horde were on board as prisoners. Prisoners of war, slaves, I, I don't know what exactly. But uh, that's, that's the horde that we're about to meet. So this is Korga. And he is a giant tauren. And they, apparently they've met the Pandaren already. They're friends with the Pandaren right here. And we need to help them get some weapons and kill some tigers. Now I'm going to speed this up a tiny bit because these two quests take a few minutes. There's somebody over here collecting the bamboo that you need to collect. And um, it, yeah, it just takes a little while for it all to spawn. So this takes a few minutes. Ding, level 10, and yes, I went Windwalker, as you can see, because Windwalkers do better DPS than a Brewmaster. I know I said Brewmaster is the best to level with, and I still firmly believe that, but as a low-level Pandaren with no BOA gear, Windwalker having Fist of Fury is much better than having Keg Smash, which you don't get until level 11 for some retarded reason. Anyway... So Windwalker for now, uh, level 18, Brewmaster takes the cake because you get Breath of Fire and your AoE potential is just ridiculous. Fist of Fury! It's such a good ability at this level, it's just amazing. I, cannot do that yet. I had a little bug there at the end. I killed the last tiger and I looted the last bamboo stick, but 
it didn't update my quest, so I had to log out and log back in, and everything was fine. Beta is beta. Stuff like that happens all the time. Don't expect that sort of thing in the uh, final release version. Turn those two in, and we get a new quest to go and meet the engineer. The G's going to follow us here, and he's going to give us a quest as well once we get to the engineer. Well met, Let's go find this engineer. So you have two quests here now, one from G and one from the engineer. You need to collect the explosives and you need to kill eight of the Serox, the lizard men. And in case you haven't seen, Fist of Fury is freaking awesome. So yeah. Well I guess now you have. So I'm sort of clogged up with a few people here and I'm just going to speed through these this quest because it also takes a while uh, I gotta wait for spawns and things like that It's good to see you. Okay, that's it. We finished that section, and now it's time to go and meet the Alliance. Okay, it's time to go and meet Captain Lionheart at the Alliance camp near the wrecked airship. And this is where we meet the Alliance. I'm going to speed it up and zoom right over there. And yeah, you may notice I've been skipping mobs that aggro on me because they're really just not worth the, the experience for the time it takes to kill them. Uh, without the BOA gear it takes a little while you kill slowly you, you need to be careful but uh, you know the 53 experience or whatever I get from killing one of them is just not worth it I'd rather go and turn this quest in more quickly and get out of this zone okay once you get here you're gonna see Jojo and you're gonna meet the captain and you have three new quests to do one is to save three injured Alliance sailors then you need to collect eight boxes of medical supplies and kill eight Serox not a big deal and the baby loves it. So one thing to note, the Alliance soldiers that you need to save, you can only pick one up at a time. So you pick one up, you carry it back to this quest area. You pick another one up, you bring it back, and then you go out and do the rest of the quest and pick the last one up at the end and bring him back and turn them all in at the same time. It's much easier to do that way and it's much more efficient. That's what it's all about. Now, a lot of the time, these Alliance, the Injured Alliance, are going to be closer to the camp than they are now. But as you saw, somebody was running past me. They're doing the same exact quest that I am. And they picked up the ones that were closer, and they just haven't respawned yet. So I get the short end of the stick and got to run all over the place to get mine. Hyperspeed questing! Go! Okay, boys and girls, this quest takes quite a while, and... Since I have your attention, if you've made it this far into the series, if you're watching right now as I'm speaking, you obviously have some sort of interest or stake in World of Warcraft. At the very least, you you play. And I want to ask you, I want to bring this up because it's been on my mind for a while since Blizzard announced it. Uh, how do you feel about them allowing the Recruit a Friend bonus, the granting levels, the 70 per, or, uh, three times experience, and that sort of thing working for monks on release day and counting as world first and server first does it bother you does it annoy you how do you feel about it 
Is it great? Does it save you a ton of time? Let me know. I, I, I'm very interested to see how everybody feels about it. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so my take on the whole thing. When I first heard that Blizzard was gonna, going to allow the recruiter friend, the RAF, four monks on day one, I was so disappointed. Because half of the fun for me of a new expansion is that first, that race to be first. And with a new race and a new class, that race is as good as it gets. And Blizzard announced that the REF would be available. And people have formulas all over the internet to set that up to grant all the way to level 80 in about three minutes. And that to me is not fun. That is, you have to buy a whole new account and you have to bring it up to the expansion at least to Wrath of the Lich King. Which is not that big a deal. It's probably 30 or $40 to do that. But you're paying to win. And you, it's, it's not legitimate. And I know a lot of people are going to do it. And that's fine. I personally am not going to do it. I won't do it. I, I seriously considered it because I wanted to be first. But I, I, I just don't feel like it's legitimate. And I know a lot of you guys are going to do it. And that's fine. I, I just wish that Blizzard would take my advice and hold it off for three days and allow the tryhards, the diehards, the people who are willing to stay up for three days straight and get a level 90 monk to, to do it. Just allow us to do it. And after that, allow the recruit a friend and everybody can grant their levels and, you know, and blow their way through the levels. That, that's just my take on it. I would like to have a legitimate race. Because right now, whoever does become world first monk, nobody is going to remember that person. Nobody's going to care because it's not going to be legitimate. They're going to recruit a friend. They're going to be 80 in three and a half minutes. And then they're going to blow through those levels. Everybody's done 80 through 85 a million times. It doesn't take very long. And then you're going to go to 90. And that takes, I don't know, 12 to 18 hours tops. So you're talking one whole day of played time, maybe, for World First. And that, you know, I just don't like that. They're not going to be seen as legitimate. And I'm rambling now, so let's just move on to the next quest. So as you may have noticed, I got a new quest. I'm helping Asa fight this boss, Serok, the big lizard man. Now, if you're doing this as a tank, it's very possible for you to pull aggro. And it's very, very possible for you to die. Now, he does have one mechanic. you got to roll out of his little earthquake. It's a frontal cone AoE. It's easy to see, easy to get out of. And other than that, this is a breeze. But like I said, as a brewmaster, you will get aggro. And you'll have to kite him around, and it takes forever. So you probably shouldn't be a brewmaster as a low-level Pandaren. You know, once you get to the real world, the very first place you'll end up is right near the monk trainer. So you can swap specializations. Anyway, he dies, you turn it in, you pick up a new quest from Asa, and this is the new cutscene, so I'm just gonna stop talking and enjoy. Gee, stop! This is reckless and stupid! Asa, this is our only option. We blow the ship free, then we heal his wound. We have no other solution. If you stop this, then maybe we can come up with one. So we just wait until we think of something? Shen Zinsu is dying. Doing nothing risks everything. Doing this risks everything. I'd rather die knowing that at least we tried. Gee, if this is what you must do, I will not stop you. But we could lose everything. I hope you are right.
He is dying. His wounds can be healed. I hope you can forgive yourself for what you have done to him. And Asa is pissed. That is the great divide between G and Asa. He goes Horde, she goes Alliance. There's the spoiler. But, uh, yeah, now they sw they're they sworn enemies, which is silly. And that it's a silly reason. Because we're going to fix this turtle's butthole right up. Now you get a new quest here from G, and basically all you do is kill Serox. Run around all over the camp and kill Serox. It'll free up healers. And they will heal the giant turtle's butthole. They will heal his wound and uh, save the day. As you see, you've got a little progress bar at the bottom. All you need to do is kill Serox. They're attacking the healers. The ones you kill, the healers will go and heal the turtle's giant butthole. And that's it. Keep the healers alive. So kill as many Cero Serox as you can until your progress bar is full. And run all around the camp. The more healers you free up, the faster the bar will go. And this is all shared. It's all phased. So if there's other people here, it's just going to speed up the process for you. Now also you might find little clickable items on the ground uh, with the little cog thing. Click on those. That means there's healers stuck under debris. I, there's not very many right now because somebody else was ahead of me. And uh, they're on the same quest, but they're a little bit ahead of my phasing. So they've already done that. They freed up the easy ones. So I'm rolling around here freeing up these last few healers so we can finish off this quest. And you'll get to see the, the new final cinematic of when we heal the turtle. Because guess what? Spoiler, we do. We save him. I can't help but think about what race I want to be. And... I know I've said it a whole bunch of times, and I even made that whole video about what race is the best monk race. And it turns out trolls are the best monk race, if you're a theory crafter. Humans, if you're a PvPer. And I really like dwarves, because they're freaking awesome. So I was set on a dwarf. I don't care about that other stuff. Dwarves just look great. But after that cinematic, man, oh, these Pandaren are awesome. They're so badass. And the more and more I play, the more I want to be a Pandaren. And since RAF is a thing, that extra half an hour that it takes to get through this zone, I I really don't care. I seriously think I'm going to be a Pandaren. As of right now, I'm going to be a Pandaren. I can't say for sure come release because I've changed my mind 50 times. No joke. Uh, from Gnome to Night Elf to all... I, I've gone through them all. But uh, it looks like Pandaren. So... I'm going to stop talking because here comes the cinematic. Is the will to act. It's working. The wound is closing. We risked everything, but we did it. Shenzhen Su will be okay. Okay, so that little cutscene has been in the game for a while, and it could be a little bit better, obviously. But you get the idea. We heal the turtle, everything is good, we save the day, and now we get to see some of that Horde and Alliance tension. They're at each other's throats up here, and if it wasn't for the Pandar and bringing them, you know, a little bit of inner peace, they, uh, they'd probably kill each other right there. But uh, that's it. That is the final quest. We get a quest here from G... And that is to go and talk to Master Shao Pai at the Temple of Five Dawns. And we're going to have a little role playing up there. And then we're going to choose our faction. Engaging hyperspeed for the Yak cart. So as you may have caught, I did my slash played before I got on the, the uh, Yak cart. And it was an hour and 32 minutes. It's not my best time, but it is pretty darn good. I've beaten that by five or six minutes, something along those lines. But uh, it really is dependent on how many people are in the zone and how long you're going to have to wait to get quest mobs to kill or 
items to loot off the ground. That bamboo quest took forever because there was a few people in the zone at that time that I had caught up to. And it really just slowed the process down. So if you're in front of the pack on release night, you can fly right through all these quests. And you might be done in an hour and 20 minutes. But you could end up being here for two plus hours. Uh, trying. To on a final note, listen to some RP. More RP. My time is passing, but your time approaches. You've all accomplished a great thing in saving Shenzhen Su. You do us all proud. It seems your journeys are not done. These new allies of ours come from a broken world that could use our help. Master Shang Tsi, I would like to accompany the Alliance back to their home. What of you, Chi? Will you join the Horde in their journey back? Yes. Perhaps that is for the best. I like what I've seen of them. And it sounds as though their world could use my help. And you, my young student, where will you go? Where you pass, greatness follows. Fuck it, I'm going to Disneyland. That's right. Get out of there. That's it. That is the Pandar and Starting Zone full walkthrough guide featuring Eat Mo Pie. And I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something. I hope this has been entertaining for you. Thank you for watching. And I'll see ya. This video is part of the Way Movement. Learn more at TGN.tv.